Uh, good afternoon, dear viewers of this, uh, our Caption TV, first TV, the first Catholic TV in our country. I'm happy to have you as we discuss a topic that touches all of us in very different ways. But first of all, I'll introduce myself. I'm um, Reverend Father Dr. James Wangai Kafata. I'm a Conventio Franciscan. Those who know the Conventio Franciscans are the priests and brothers, especially working in Sumbukia Shrine, the printing press of Lemulu, and we have several offices within Nairobi, Meru, Mombasa. But most of all, I'm a Franciscan. Uh, I work at Consolata Institute of Philosophy. I'm the rector of the institute where I lecture philosophy. I'm more interested in, in philosophy of science. I teach cosmology also, that is the philosophy of nature and various other disciplines of philosophy. Many times I hear students and my own friends telling me that philosophy is a very difficult subject. But also I found some people who have always asked me what could be the relationship between philosophy and life? Now, this topic, I think I will be discussing it for some time, every Monday at this hour, and when something changes, is something to do with philosophy, but at the same time with life. So my question, the one that I'm going to discuss today, is the relationship between thoughts and emotions. You know the thoughts, is something more in, the, in, the, in, our, in our mind, and the emotions is what happens within you. Sometimes you can ask yourself, how comes two people are in the traffic jam, and the vehicles are not moving? One gets agitated, annoyed, insults, raised fingers, and is blasting everybody. Whereas the other one is calm, maybe praying a rosary or doing something. Now you can see here there is one event. Both are in the traffic jam, but the two people react differently. In our discussions, we'll be trying to see what is the relationship between your thoughts and your emotions. Can your thoughts produce emotions within you? So, we usually say that thoughts and emotions are related and sometimes can be experienced together. But at the same time, thoughts and emotions are distinct. So you don't have to act and feel according to your thoughts. So what are thoughts? Thoughts are mental cognitions. They are our ideas, our opinions, and our beliefs. The things that we believe about ourselves so they include the perspective, any perspective that you bring to any situation or experience that, you know, color your point of view can be better, can be worse, or can be neutral. And that is why sometimes it is good as parents, those who have children, to be very careful of the words that you tell your children. Because by saying something to your child, you are already putting a mental cognition within the child, a kind of thought, and this thought will influence how the child behaves, how the child feels. So an example of a long-lived thought, a thought that has always been within you, is called an attitude. And this attitude develops, you know, as thoughts that are repeated over and over in you until they become reinforced in you. So while thoughts are shaped by life experiences, genetics and education, they are also generally under conscious control. In other words, if you are aware of your thoughts and attitudes, you can choose to change them. Sometimes that is why even when people go for counseling, what the counselor is trying to do, or the psychologist, is to bring you into contact with your own thought system. Because these thoughts are the ones that make you, some people feel the way they feel. 
So those are the thoughts. They are mental cognitions. They are within now uh, the ideas and the opinions and the beliefs that you have. Now, what are emotions? Many times we use this word emotions, and um, sometimes we, we really don't know exactly what is the meaning of emotion. So it may be useful for us to think of emotions as the flow and experience of feelings. For example, when we talk of emotion, we talk in terms of joy. I feel joyful or sadness. I feel sad or anger. And anger is one of the most strong emotions that really disturb most people because even if you look at the word anger, anger, if you add D into that word, what becomes of it is danger. So anger is danger. There are also emotions of fear. So emotions can be triggered by something that is external. For example, when you see a friend suffering in a movie, this is something that is there, but some people even cry in the movies. I've seen people crying. But can also be that is external, but can also be something within you. For example, if you have a memory of something upsetting you, and that is why sometimes you get annoyed with some people. You meet some people, and because these people trigger a memory of what happened one day, you see, you become angry immediately. And, and that is why some people say, I, I have to avoid that person, because whenever I see this person, I get angry. It's because there is something internally within you that keep on coming. So. While emotions are universal, each person may experience them and respond to them in a different way. Some people may struggle with understanding what emotion they are experiencing. There are people who say, Father, I don't know, I, I just feel today so down. I just feel sad. I just feel unhappy. You ask them, why are you unhappy? I really don't know. So it is possible that emotions have to connect us with others. They also help us to cultivate strong social bonds. So this may be evolutionary purpose of emotions. People who were able to form strong bonds and emotional ties become a part of a community. And sometimes they are able to respond to each other and even to support each other. So people view the world in different manners, depending on, and that is why I began with the example of a person in the traffic jam. Two people in the traffic jam. One gets very much annoyed, agitated, is cursing, is insulting, is so unhappy. But another one is still uh, emotionally. She's just praying the rosary or listening to the rumba. Or calling people, although in Kenya you know it's not good to, it's not allowed to talk uh, when you are driving. But since the vehicles are not moving, I see some people use the opportunity to connect with the people. So now let us ask ourselves this question: What are some of the factors can influence that can influence your emotions? There are three basic factors. Of course, there are many, but I want to discuss those that are very, are very uh, close to us. One is cultural traditions and beliefs. Where do you come from? Your culture and your beliefs and your traditions, sometimes they affect the way you feel. So they can affect the way a group of people or an individual express emotions. So there are some cultures in, in which it is deemed bad manners to express emotions in a way that may be considered held and appropriate in other cultures. For example, most of the African cultures, and I won't talk of my own culture, sometimes we always say men do not cry. But I can ask you a question. How can you lose your friend? How can you lose your mom? Or some people, how can you lose your beloved pet? And then you are told you can't cry. 
some men they hide they go to cry in the toilet actually there is a, there is a swahili saying analilia eh? kwacho because the culture does not allow people to express their emotions but these things still we, as we go on you realize there is a way they affect you if there was a big loss in your family and you never expressed your emotions you never got a chance to mourn then this affect you not only at that time but even in the future i'm looking at the way people have buried their relatives during the covid 19 times it was one of the most disastrous thing that we have done also as a country although now researches have come and i think also it is known that maybe dead people do not transmit covid 19 i'm not an expert in this i'm sure the minister is going to talk about it if he has not already talked about it but that kind of send off was particularly very emotional to the family sending your relative just within 15 to 40 minutes it is not the normal way although these are circumstances when we were told that there can only be 15 people in a barrio i remember a family of my friend in rironi that is in lemuru area they are more than 15 they are more than 15 and they have wives and children and this mwalim who has been a teacher since 60s and 50s and to be buried only by half of the family and again that was very emotional even myself i could not at- attend so there are some saying there are some traditions which do not allow people to express their emotions and this is dangerous when you go to italy i stayed in italy it's very normal to see a man crying a young man comes to express his feelings of something that disappointed him and they cry they cry even in the confessionals they cry a folas in africa folas here you have to be very strong you have to show people that you are in control but do your emotions understand that do, do do your emotions respect that we shall see as we go on the other thing that can affect your emotions is something that many people don't think about genetics the genes or more specifically the brain and the personality structure of a human person this can affect you they sometimes they affect the emotional expressions of a person in a very particular way there are some families that sometimes ha- are more prone to stress are more prone to depression it can also be worked upon but sometimes it is in the genes and uh, because some people cry very easily and by their families that nobody cries so it is important for us to know that some things are within our genes but doesn't mean that we have to be affected by that but we only know that so that we are able to control ourselves if you have in your family some people who are undergoing stress and anxiety and panics they can also affect you at the same time and therefore it's good for you to know it and to know how to start handling it as early as possible sometimes also the physical conditions i said the cultural and traditional background i have talked about the genes and now the third one is physical conditions for example if somebody has a brain tumor or stroke or parkinson disease or alzheimer or metabolic disorders or so many things that are physical also affect your emotions uh, i think we will we'll come back to this uh, maybe we can take a, a short break and then we come and see what we think how does it impact how we feel how does it come from here to here what is my mental thought how is it affecting my emotions let's take a 2 minutes break
our masses will start from 6 o'clock in the evening East African time Capuchin TV a Catholic Broadcasting Ministry tunafuraha kukujulisha kwamba misa takatifu ya kila siku ni kama ifuatavyo saa moja kamili asubuhi saa saba unusu mchana saa kumi na mbili jioni na saa mbili unusu usiku go forth the mass is ended thanks be to god mpenzi mtazamaji tunakuenzi na kukudhamini endelea kutazama capuchin tv kitubio au upatanisho Sakramenti ya kitubio ndiyo sakramenti ya kuondolea o watu thambi walizotenda baada ya ubatizo. Sakramenti ya kitubio pia huitwa sakramenti ya upatanisho ipo katika fungu la sakramenti za uponyaji. Kuna sakramenti mbili za uponyaji, kitubio na mpako mtakatifu wa wagonjwa. Dhumuni haswa la sakramenti ya uponyaji ni kuzirejeshea uhai roho zetu pale zinapougua kwa kutenda dhambi. Yesu ndiye tabibu mkuu wa roho zetu naye yu tayari kututibu kila tunapougua. Kupata kitubio kama sikiza tuni yako tuma neno sikiza likifuatwa na nambari 738102073 Liturgia Katoliki Sakramenti Kuungama Ekaristi Sala Nyimbo Neno la Mungu Ibada takatifu Jiunge nasi kila siku ya Jumapili saa moja unusu usiku na Jumatatu saa nne asubuhi kwa Liturgia Katoliki na Padre Bonfas Mukwe Welcome back. I, I, we just discussed the, the factors that they can influence our emotions. We, we talked of the cultural traditions, where you come from. We talked of the genetics, how you are formed, the bio, and the physical conditions. Of, of course, sometimes we have those things that they also make a lot of sense. When you say very short, people get annoyed very quickly. Does the physical statue of somebody, the height, affect how he gets annoyed. Maybe later we shall, this is a big research, and uh, we'll see whether maybe even the physical status affects some people. And why? Because sometimes they think you are, not, you are ignoring them or something like that. Now, what we think, does it impact how we feel? Thoughts and emotions have a profound effect on one another. Let me tell you, thoughts can trigger emotions. The thoughts that you are having, maybe there's an upcoming job interview, may cause fear. Or maybe the thoughts that you are going for a medical test may cause fear. But it can also serve as an appraisal of that emotion. So sometimes it's not realistic, but there's always that fear. You know, many people think that uh, some of us who speak publicly most of the time, like us priests celebrating masses, that we are always free from fear. No, there is always that anxiety that comes when you have to address so many people. Sometimes you are thinking, what will I say? Will it bring value to the people? Will I say something wrong? But maybe even politicians. But if you don't have that little fear, you can easily mess up. It is important. But... The worst is when the fear is prolonged and it really affects even how you perform. In addition, how we attend to and how we appraise our lives has an effect on how we feel. For example, a person without or with the fear of dogs is likely supposed to be hypersensitive when he sees a dog crossing the street. But the other one who doesn't fear the dogs may not have the same fear. So another person who sees dogs as friendly 
and most of us Franciscans are like that, that even I visit a family where they tell me you have to cough because the dogs here is very fierce. But I go and I enter and the dogs, they just look at me as I pass. Of course, don't try this if you are not a Franciscan like me. But it is true that the more you fear the dog, the more the dog even gets to sense your own fears, and the more it is likely going to attack you. But it is important for you also to know that this fear has a cause. Maybe as a child, there is something that happened with, uh, or there is a story that you read about a dog that chased somebody and died. Or you had stories about friendly dogs, something like that. So we have done how many things? We have discussed what are the thoughts? What are emotions? What influences the emotions? And how, which are the factors that can influence how we, we feel? The cultural background, the genetics, and the physical conditions. And then what we think does it impact how we feel? Now, I was just talking with somebody outside. I said, how comes somebody can enter into a room, say a very harsh word, and the people react differently? People don't react the same. So, can we change our thoughts and emotions? Is it possible? So, we tend to believe that they are part of us. There is nothing we can do. But sometimes it's good to know, sometimes you can do something. For example, altering an external situation. Uh, if you stay with somebody who really is very harsh to you, you can try to avoid discussing with that people, with that person. There is a story of a, a man, a philosopher, who said, uh, he was asked by the friend, how do you maintain your, your joy, your peace, and you don't argue with the people. And then the man said, I maintain my peace because when somebody says something bad, I always ignore. And the other friend said, of course, that is very, it's very stupid. You cannot say that. And the man said, yes, I agree. So the man was shocked, and that is a way of avoiding arguments. Because we have also people called Sandists. They are the people who enjoy when you are in problems. They are the people who enjoy when you are feeling pain. They are, they, they are these people who, even when they are sharing a very bad experience of someone else, they are laughing. In philosophy, we have two schools. We have the Epicureans and the Stoics. The Epicureans are the people who enjoy life to the maximum. For them is nyamachoma, drinks, so many things. They enjoy. They are the life of the party. But at the same time, we have the Stoics. The Stoics, they enjoy pain. And the more even they feel pain, there are people who inflict themselves pain. Those are the Stoics. When we come next time, we shall try to analyze how my thinking and my feeling get connected. Because at the end of the day, we want also to learn how to control, how to maintain in order to live a health life. And a healthy life, uh, psychologically or philosophically, we say it is not the perfect life. It's that kind of life where you are able to cope with daily activities, to cope with your daily problems, to live despite all that is surrounding you. So I think we'll meet again and discuss that relationship again between the thinking, the feeling, and how they are connected. Thank you very much.
Coronavirus COVID-19 is a respiratory virus spreading across the world. The infection is spread from droplets of coughing and sneezing of an infected person, touching or shaking hands or being in contact with contaminated surfaces or objects with the virus. The signs and symptoms are fever, coughing, headache, body ache, difficulty in breathing. The disease can be prevented by regularly washing hands with soap and running water. Avoid close contact with people who have flu-like symptoms. Avoid handshake, hugs and kissing. Also, protect yourself by covering your mouth or nose using a disposable tissue while coughing or sneezing. If you experience these symptoms and you had traveled or been in contact with a person from a country reporting COVID-19, you should isolate yourself for 14 days and seek immediate medical attention or report to the nearest health center. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. For accurate information on COVID-19, dial star 719 hash or call 719. Follow us on Twitter at MOH underscore Kenya at spokesperson GOK at WHO. Kipaimara Ni sakramenti yenye kumpa Mkristo roho mtakatifu na ukamilifu wa mapaji yake saba kumfanya Mkristo mkamilifu na kumfanya shahidi hodari wa Yesu Kristo mpaka kufa. Kupata kipaimara kama sikiza tuni yako, tuma neno sikiza likifuatwa na nambari 738102 kwa nane moja moja.